Okay, so put away your calculators and let's see how much you actually understand about multiplication because this problem right here is nothing more than a multiplication problem. So we're taking this number and we're going to square it. All right, so what does it mean to square a number? Uh, well, let's take a look at a simple example like 3 squared. So when we want to square a number, we're going to take this number and multiply it by itself. So 3 squared is equal to 3 times 3, which, of course, is 9. So the answer to this question right here is going to be the square root of 5 minus 2 times itself. All right, so no calculators, but uh, let's take a look at our answers because we do have a multiple choice question here. And our first uh, option is A, which is the square root of 10. And then we have B, which is 40. C is 9 minus 4 times the square root of 5 and D is negative 100. All right, so go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so we're gonna be using one of the most critical properties of multiplication to solve this problem, okay? So think about how much you actually know about multiplication. So we're gonna take this and multiply it by itself. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C which is 9 minus 4 times the square root of 5. Now, if you did not use a calculator and you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. So congratulations. And if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I thought I knew how to multiply like 6 times 3 is 18. Well, that is a good start. And the property that we're going to be using here is actually uh, something that we can look at uh, from a very basic math standpoint. In other words, here, this looks pretty complex, but I'm going to teach you something that uh, you may not have known about multiplication, which is a critical, critical property, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra. All right, but uh, before I get into that, you know, if you're looking at this problem and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was totally lost here, well, always take a guess, especially if you are a math student. Never leave a multiple choice or any question at that blink. So some of you might be like, well, I don't know here. I got a square root of 5, a 2. Maybe I need to multiply this number times that. So the square root of 10 looks like a pretty good guess. Well, that's a good guess, but unfortunately, that is wrong. So the correct answer here is C. All right, so how do we get this answer? Well, I'm going to explain this all in just one second. But uh, first, we're going to get into a very interesting uh, property of multiplication. Matter of fact, this may be my favorite property out of all of mathematics. Now, I know that's kind of weird sounding, but uh, of course, as somebody who loves math, you know, we need all these properties of mathematics. But uh, this property here is such a cool property, and it's called the distributive property. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, uh, the distributive property. I'm not going to write that out. I'm just kind of saying it. And if you've heard of the, uh, the distributive property, then, well, that is fantastic. I'm going to give you a few examples of uh, that property right now. So in algebra, if I have 2 times x plus 1, what uh, is this equal to? Well, we use something, again, called the distributive property. We're going to take this 2 and multiply it by x. So that's going to be 2x plus this 2 times this 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So this thing right here is equal to this. Now, hopefully most of you are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know that property. Well, that is fantastic. But this property is all about multiplication. And really, it's a cool way to multiply uh, values. Okay, now you can multiply algebraic expressions or numbers in a different way. So let me go ahead and give you some examples here. So let's take 2 times 10. So in multiplication uh, or in arithmetic, or in mathematics in general, when I want to uh, write multiplication, I could do it this way, 2 times 10. I can use this little dot as an operator, or I could say 2 times 10 this way, or I can say 10 times 2 this way. So we're going to use this notation right here uh, with the parentheses. So if I have a number outside of the parentheses, this means multiplication. All right, so let's take a look at 2 times 10. Now, 2 times 10 
is what? Well, of course, it is 20. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the distributor property. So the distributor property means or is the following. And I'm kind of giving you an informal explanation of the actual distributive property from a mathematical standpoint because, you know, that's a kind of a mouthful. I don't want to give you the technical definition. Matter of fact, I'll give it to you right now. It's A plus B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. All right, so that is the distributive property. But, uh, you know, that's a little bit uh, too complicated for the purposes of what I'm trying to emphasize. So let's take a look at this simple example. Okay, so the distributive property means that when we're multiplying a number times another number, we could take one of the numbers or even both of the numbers and break this number up into a sum or difference. All right, so let's think of 10 as something else. So maybe we'll think of 10 as like 8 plus 2. All right, so uh, 10, you can have all different sorts of combinations of like 5 plus 5, 8 plus 2, 7 plus 3. It doesn't make a difference because it will always work. So now we're going to go ahead and use the distributor property. Now what that means is that we're going to distribute this number on the outside of the parentheses to the sum and difference. So 2 times 8 is what? Well, 2 times 8 is 16, plus we have to uh, take this 2 and also multiply it by all the other numbers within the parentheses. So 2 times 2 is 4. 16 plus 4, of course, is 20, which is our answer. All right, so you can see how uh, interesting this property is. We could take 10 and break it up in any way and still get back to the correct answer. Now, this works with uh, differences as well. So, for example, I could be like, well, maybe uh, 12 minus 2 is a way that I want to express 10. So, 2 times 12 minus 2 is what? Well, let's go ahead and use the distributive property. So, 2 times 12 is what? Well, that's 24 minus 2 times 2, which, of course, is 4. So, 24 minus 4 is 20. All right, so we can kind of do any... Uh, sort of combinations of numbers uh, to uh, make this work out. Matter of fact, it doesn't even have to be two numbers. Let me show you another example. So let's uh, take two and let's think of 10 as maybe uh, 4 plus 4 plus 2. All right, so 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2, of course, is 10. So let's go ahead and do, use the, uh, the distributor property here. So 2 times 4 is what? Well, that's 8. Then that's going to be plus this other 2 times 4, which, of course, is 8, plus 2 times 2, which, of course, is 4. All right, so 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. Okay, so hopefully you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's pretty cool. But uh, what does that have to do with this problem right here? Well, I'm getting to that. Now let's take a look at another example. How about 9 times 9? All right, so 9 times 9 or 9 squared is 81. But now I'm going to show you something really, really cool about the distributive property. And I'm going to take this, uh, these 9s here, and I'm going to break it up this way. So I want to take this 9, and I'm going to go 8 plus 1. That's 9. And then this 9 will do it the same way, 8 plus 1. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and use the distributive property to get the right answer, which, of course, is going to be 81. But now we're going to do something a bit different because we have two things, okay? We don't have one number outside of this sum. In other words, we don't have 2 times 8 plus 1. We have 8 plus 1 times 8 plus 1. Okay, now in math, for those of you that have studied algebra, what I'm going to be showing you here is something called the FOIL method, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. But uh, basically, I don't like to use that acronym because um, although there's nothing wrong with the FOIL method, the way I like to uh, teach this is the following. Okay, so we're going to use the distributive property, but the way this is going to work is we're going to start with this first number right here, okay? And we're going to distribute to this thing over here just as if this problem was this uh, or written like this, 8 times 8 plus 1. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just multiply just like we did in those previous examples. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so 8 times 8 is what? Well, 8 times 8 is 64. 4 plus 8 times 1 is what? That is 8. Now we're done with this 8 right here, and we multiplied by everything over here, but we're not done. So the way this works, when you have more than one thing that we're multiplying using the distributive property, we go over to the next number. All right, so we're done with this 8, so now we have to work on this one right here, 
and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute this 1. So this is going to be 1 times 8 is what? Well, 1 times 8 is 8. And we're going to add up uh, the results of all of these uh, products. And then 1 times 1, of course, is 1. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, this is going to be 64 plus 16. So 64 plus 8 plus 8 is 16. That, of course, is 80 plus 1 gets us to 81. All right, so here, 8 plus 1, of course, is 9. And 9 times 9 is 81. But uh, this property, the distributive property, is critically important in algebra. Now that you know a thing or two about the distributive property, we can use it to actually solve this problem. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to take this thing right here and multiply it by itself. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 5 minus 2. Now, because we have this... Um, a square root of 5 and minus 2, we can't combine these numbers. In other words, we don't have a situation like 8 plus 1 where we can add this up. Like 8 plus 1, of course, is 9. It will make our life easier if we add up what's inside of the parentheses. But here, we cannot add uh, or we cannot subtract the square root of 5 minus 2. In other words, we can't just uh, write an answer here. It's not like the square root of 3. So this is as simple as this number gets without a calculator. Now, of course, I can get some decimal values here. Uh, with my calculator, but we're not using a calculator. But what we can he uh, do here, excuse me, is use the distributive property to simplify this expression. Okay, so let's go and do that right now. So we're going to have the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 5 times 5. So when you're multiplying uh, square roots, what you're going to do is multiply the numbers underneath the square root, and you're going to put that over one big square root. So the square root of um, 5 times 5, of course, is the square root of 25, or 5. Okay, so the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is equal to 5. Okay, now we're going to take the square root of 5 and multiply it by this negative 2. Now, we do have to consider this sign right here. And by the way, in mathematics, these two things right here, or an expression where you have two things that you can't add or subtract, is called a binomial. So we're taking this binomial and we're multiplying it by uh, itself, or it's a binomial times a binomial. Okay, so we have the square root of 5 times negative 2. That's going to be equal to negative 2 times the square root of 5. We're just simply going to take this number and multiply it by that, so we write the answer this way. Now we have the negative, we have another negative 2 times the square root of 5, so that is going to be a negative 2 times the square root of 5 again, and then we're almost done. We have one more term to uh, do here, so that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which of course is a positive 4. All right, so let's go ahead and just review the distributive property. So I started off with this number, okay? So I multiplied this number times this and this, but we weren't done, right? So after uh, multiplying by or distributing by the square root of 5, I moved over to negative 2, and I did the same thing. Okay, so now I can add all these terms up. So a negative 2 uh, square root of 5 plus another negative 2 square root of 5 is going to be a negative 4, okay, square root of Five. That's how many square, root, square roots of fives I have. I have a negative 2 and a, a negative 2 here, so that's negative uh, 4 square root of 5. And then, of course, I have 5 plus 4, which is 9. So 9 minus uh, 4 times the square root of 5 is the correct answer. All right, now this property here, uh, basically, when you learn it in algebra, is called the FOIL method. Okay, But really, it's the distributive property. So, for example, if I had x plus 2 and I was multiplying by x plus 3, well, I would use uh, the FOIL method. This stands for first, outer, inner, last. So the first is right here, right? So the first times the first, okay, these are the first terms of each of these binomials, is what? Well, that's x squared. Now the outer terms are going to be what? These are the outers. So this is going to be x plus 3. So that's going to be plus 3x. But you can see here, this is simply following the pattern of the distributive property. All right, so we're done with the x, and so now we're going to move uh, over to the 2. So 2 times x, this is our inner. So that's going to be plus 2x. And then our last terms of the uh, binomials are going to be 2 and 3, which, of course, is 6. So here we have x squared plus 3x plus 2x is 5x plus 6. 
Okay, so we covered a lot about multiplication, and uh, really I wanted to use this uh, uh, opportunity or this problem as uh, you know a nice segue uh, into really reviewing the distributive property. Okay, it's such a, a critically important property in mathematics, and uh, I think it's one of the coolest uh, properties because you can just do so many multiplication problems in all sorts of crazy ways, right? So for example, six times three, we can be like, all right, six times three, how can I multiply six times three? Well, maybe you can go like six times, we can think of this three as like two plus one. So six times two is what? Well, that's 12 plus six uh, times one, of course, that's six, and 12 plus six is 18. All right, so hopefully this uh, property makes sense. And by the way, uh, if you need additional help with uh, algebra or you know uh, any sort of level of mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But if this particular video helps you out, well, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.